All right, all right. Today is an exciting day, and uh, I finally gonna share my thoughts on editing on this new MacBook Pro 16 inch, as I promised in my last video. Quick disclaimer. Everything was edited using an external monitor. I have an LG 32 inches. Most of it was edited off of SSD drive. One project was edited on the computer itself. And I was editing from cameras such as Canon R5, shooting in 4K 120, 4K HQ, 8K RAW. I also had samples from RED cameras, 8K Monstro. I'm gonna put all the list of the cameras actually here on the screen so you can see it for yourself. GoPro footage, uh, DJI from Air 2, everything was in log, so either it's C-log or D-log, as well as DJI 5.4K footage, GoPro real steady. I think this should put everything into place finally, since I put it all through the test, and I'm really excited to share the results. I only use Premiere and After Effects and pretty much all the Adobe suite, so I also tested out Photoshop and Lightroom, how does it perform, export times, and using everything at the same time as we would do in a real-time scenario. So a lot of times when I was editing these, I had Chrome open, I had Photoshop open, I had Premiere and After Effects open at the same time, and I was actually working on a project, so it all made sense. Right off the bat, first impression, this computer is quiet. When I had my Intel powered Mac, anytime I would run something serious, After Effects or Premiere or anything that I would do crazy on a computer, the fans would turn on like crazy. No matter what the heck I was doing, this computer was just sitting quiet. All right, let's get into the most exciting one is editing Canon R5 videos, especially 4K 120 and 4K HQ. Well, obviously and also 8K, but I never do edit 8K, but I still wanted to test it out since Apple promised us that you can edit, what, six layers of 8K video at the same time, but it's ProRes and it's Final Cut Pro. So I went ahead and I threw in eight R5 videos during these whole edits. I had a screen recording on and I noticed if I turn off Google Chrome and screen recording, the performance was a bit better. So here's an 8K R5 clip that I was editing and I wanted to put some layers, as I mentioned, on top of each other. So the performance was good. I wouldn't say it was like the best, but I noticed it plays the best in Premiere at one fourth of the quality. You can get by by one half, but as soon as you start adding a little bit of color, warp stabilizer, speed ramps, um, you know, one layer on top of each other, this is just not the case. It won't handle it. It will kind of struggle and you can still scrub, which is amazing. No proxies, nothing, full quality. But like I said, it kind of struggles. So I noticed one fourth of the quality works the best. Also, it was funny because at one point I had After Effects open and I had three 8K clips on top of each other, some color grading, adjustment layer, and that's it. And the computer gave me a warning that the system ran out of memory. So it is worth to get 64 gigs, which I paid like 400 bucks extra because it will eat your unified memory. I think when I tested it is 4K editing on the R5. And this I'm really happy about, 4K HQ, 4K 120, which I would never be able to play before and even process, you would struggle like crazy. I was able to scrub, I like butter, no matter what quality, full quality, C-Log 3. I've added so many effects. I edited the whole freaking project and I have, I mean, you can see here, a lot of layers. I have a lot of effects. I had linked projects from After Effects, speed ramps, color grading, and it just didn't suffer at all. Like the playback as smooth as butter. I didn't have to go any quality down. One minute, huge project, no issues. I love that. I was just able to scroll like nothing. Another thing to mention is what I really love about the new MacBook is these videos finally play back on the computer itself. So you can just hit space and it opens up and you can just play it. So as the CR3 files, finally you can open them or I think it's a software update, not the computer update, which is nice because finally you can just see the files in the preview. So here you can see some clips that I applied speed ramps. I reversed the clip. That would always just go crazy. If I reverse the clip, even using proxies, my computer would just go nuts. And if I apply speed ramp to it, if I nested it, warp stabilized it, and then apply something else on top using color adjustments where I have two of them in here and music, this would just go nuts. 
Here I had no issues whatsoever. I had a couple of issues with Premiere where it crashed. The normal. It is what it is. I feel like it's more Premiere that we have to complain to the Adobe suite because during this whole project, it took me probably like five hours to edit. I had Premiere crash on me about five times for some reason. And that was with DJI footage. Something that happened was with DJI footage and the link footage, the dynamic link was After Effects where it would kind of just like freeze and wouldn't let me do anything until I close After Effects, close Premiere, then Premiere would freeze by closing, then I would have to end the task, reopen everything, and then it worked fine. So there was some issues with DJI 5.4K footage, but it was really inconsistent because sometimes it would just work, the same clip would work really good. I threw in three clips from the red monster camera, all shot in 8K, I just put it on top of each other, I put some color on top of it, and it was playing fine, which is crazy. Uh, full quality, it was struggling a little bit when I had three layers on top of each other. When I went down all the way to one fourth, it was a smooth playback. And you wouldn't even notice the drop of quality when you do one fourth, that's the funny fact. Because it's an 8K, so like, even if you drop it down that low, it just looks the same, you know? So you're not losing out on anything, no proxies, wow, really impressive. Next day I decided to edit some GoPro clips, which I'll tell you right off the bat, it played just fine. I have an 8, uh, GoPro 8, 4K highest quality, no issues at all. Then I play back some real steady footage, which is pretty specific for FPV users. Usually I have issues with that software and that codec, but nothing, it just played like butter. After being stabilized and real steady, everything played back just like it should. Now I also wanted to export the project and to compare it how my previous computer would export, which just was the MacBook Pro 2017. So I had exactly the same project, which was actually the previous video of the unboxing of the MacBook. If you haven't seen it, watch it here. And that video took exactly five minutes and 15 seconds to export on the new computer. Nine minute video shot in 4K C-Log 3. And on my previous computer, it went to sleep in 18 minutes and it was about 90% the computer went to sleep. So I feel like it was about 22, 23 minutes, which is like four or five times longer than the expert on this computer. And not to mention that the old MacBook was, the fans were on the whole time so loud. It was just going like, like an airplane about to take off. I also try to compare some performance in Lightroom and Photoshop and yeah, I just try to export some photos and it's pretty much double the time that it takes to export the same photos on the older Mac than on the new one, which is great. It only took a minute compared to two to export like 100 photos. And all I was doing is just exporting them as JPEGs. So nothing crazy. Also, I noticed that the link in between Lightroom and Photoshop works a lot faster. So you can just, everything just opens up super quick. Like you hit Control E, pro tip, that actually opens the Lightroom photo in in Photoshop, you do your edits and you just press, press later control S, which saves it, brings it back to Lightroom, and then you just have another file with Photoshop adjustments that you can export and just go from there. You can do your speed ramps like nothing. In After Effects, in Premiere, dynamic link, it doesn't matter. You can do your color adjustments over 8K footage, any footage, with everything else open, just like nothing. Everything changes super freaking fast, like no complaint. Warp stabilizer, great improvement, both in After Effects and Premiere, pretty much. I felt like After Effects takes a little bit longer for some reason, I'm not sure why. I was always focused on getting latest and greatest cameras and lenses, but I was always like, ah, I'm good with the computer. I wish I took myself back like two years ago and invested in a good computer instead of great cameras. Cause I'd rather still have the Canon R, which was edited and fine on my old computer, instead of R5, which I was just struggling with for a whole year. It stopped me from literally creating a bunch of projects that I never wanted to do because I was like, man, I open up this thing in my computer. I just don't even want to do it because even after creating proxies, cause I was like, ah, I'll, I'll do the proxies overnight and I'll have them ready tomorrow and I'll just start editing. No, it will be slow as heck. Like nothing will work the same. Well, I think that is all I wanted to cover. I think I put this computer to a pretty rough test, even if it told me that it ran out of memory and it crashed at least five times. 
So it's fair to say I did my job here pretty good. I would recommend if you have the money to rather buy more powerful computer than a more, the best camera out there. I'd rather work with not the best camera, but the most powerful computer because you will be a lot more productive. And the difference it makes from a $2,000 camera to a $5,000 camera, most people don't even notice. But the $2,000 computer opposed to $5,000 computer, it makes a huge difference. You are buying this thing for at least four or five years. In the long term, you are definitely making your money back. I hope this video helped you guys. I hope it was a good a review of the editing of all these files and clips on this computer. If you are liking this kind of content, I would highly appreciate if you subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos from me every time I post. Don't forget to like this video. Comment below what are your thoughts on the editing process using the new MacBook Pro and which one are you getting? Thank you so much for watching again. See you next time. Peace.